you and thank you to the Akira Checks team for the honor of giving the keynote today. Um, and it promises to be an exciting day um, and a great space for women to collaborate, create and engage. Today should be a good day. Um, so as, as necessary, I always have to begin with a little bit of a spiel about ThoughtWorks and then I'll get a little bit into the topic of Let Women Build. So ThoughtWorks is a software solutions leader with technology at its core. We provide custom software delivery, pioneering tools and consulting for organizations with ambitious missions. And we think we're quite good at it. Our mission, as Angie described earlier, is to better humanity through software and help drive the creation of a socially and economically just world. To do this, we bring together the most capable, driven, and passionate people. We call ourselves thought workers. We're over 20 years old, have about 4,000 thought workers roaming about 15 countries. As you know, software is, ev is everywhere and it's changing the world. It erases borders, shrinks distances, destroys old notions of time. If you do it well, it creates excitement and loyalty. If you don't, it frustrates and undermines. At ThoughtWorks, diversity is not just a numbers game, but core to who we are. Our global executive leadership team, of which I am a part, is made up of 50% women and well represented between global north and global south. It helps us think differently and we are better able to serve our clients. We recognize this is tough, but never want to never a company to shy from tough, um, as there's a fraternity culture in technology that tends to push women away from core technology roles. And I believe many women in this room can attest to this. Um, so Ada Lovelace um, was a British mathematician and writer, and she was known for her work on the analytical engine. Her notes on the engine include what was recognized as the first algorithm intended to be carried out by a machine. She's often regarded as the first computer programmer. And as part of our Ada Lovelace celebration, ThoughtWorks ran a campaign to have 200 women share um, a thank you for the past and a wish for the future message. I'd like to play a couple videos that touch on some of my thoughts about how we can let women build and show this as a universal consideration. Adding a big thank you to women for online tech communities. Um, as someone who's a career changer and completely self-taught, I didn't really know where to go for resources. And online groups like Women Who Code and Girls DIY, it really gave me a place where I felt comfortable and felt supported by women who are in the same position as me. And they gave me the confidence to make the career change that I really needed. Um, and what I wish for the future is that our investment in educational programs um, and STEM programs in particular for girls are going to create a new generation of women who can enter this technology space and feel welcome and feel confident. I grew up in Mexico City in a community that discouraged girls from going to a career in science. So from a very young age, I was told that because I was a girl, I should probably pick something different like marketing or, or advertising, something that wasn't related to physics or math, which is what I liked. When it came time to choose colleges, I decided to study philosophy because I was very inquisitive. And two years in, the hunger I had for discovery and for knowing how the world works was not going to go away. So I applied to schools in the US, and I received a scholarship to attend an undergraduate school at Brandeis. There, I took an astronomy course, and I took a lot of courage with very little math, and I met Rupesh, the teaching assistant who was from India, and I confessed to him that I didn't want to die without trying, without trying to do physics. So Rupesh mentored me so that in the next two months, I had to cram the whole first two years with a physics major so that I could skip those and then enter the career as a junior so that I could end, uh, finish my BA in physics while I had the time with my scholarship. After I did that, I went to Stanford and I became the first Mexican woman to get a PhD in physics. And I realized that with privilege comes responsibility. So my wish for the future is that many other women like me find mentors who help light the way and help them thrive in the technology, engineering, science, and math. What I like about Tiffany, who's a developer, she went first, and Deborah, who's our lead data scientist, is that we come to technology in many different ways. 
And what shapes how we build starts with appreciating the journey. You may not have reached the other side, but keeping the dream alive and staying motivated always allows the journey to persist. I'll share a little bit about my journey and the lessons I've learned along the way um, to where I, I am now leading amazing and inspiring women and men who are passionate, purpose-led individuals committed to revolutionizing the IT industry and creating positive social change. I do remember not enjoying the arts um, and still have a bit of trauma about the use of film versus movie and being berated, quite embarrassingly, by my English teacher. Not to mention memories of spending my time in Swahili class on my knees because my mind simply refused to take linguistics. But what I do recall quite distinctly was a push by my teachers towards accounting and humanities. Um, Andrew was referring to the time, that time around Form 2, when we sort of get pushed towards dropping some certain subjects. And for me, it was a push towards accounting and humanities. But for the boys who were also good at math, it was towards the sciences. And a boy who now is rightly corrected and a good friend of mine was really encouraging that I should not select sciences because I was a girl. And I think perhaps just out of rebellion, I chose math, physics, and chemistry to prove it was possible. I should also mention, sharing a little bit more about my journey, that my younger brother and I had a relatively unorthodox upbringing. We were raised Christian scientists at a time when everyone around us was either Baptist, Catholic, Hindu, or Muslim. We were raised by a single mother who somehow found extra hours in her day to pursue advanced degrees while still taking care of us. And as, if, and as if that was not busy enough, she also changed careers. She was just telling um, April about how she, if, you, if it's geology today, you follow geology. If it becomes chemical engineering tomorrow, you follow chemical engineering. So for us, this was our normal, and we, we didn't know any, any, any different. So I'll fast forward, um, I'll pass through high school and all the trauma of high school, and get to college, where I chose economics because there was a, this was in the US. Um, my professor, a white um, South African African, had nothing nice to say about Africa, and I felt that I must attend all his courses so that there would be someone in the room that could dispute his facts. I then chose computer science because it made sense. It felt like this was a place where I didn't have to memorize um, dates and regurgitate facts as I had in my high school experience, but actually begin to, to process logic and it really made sense. And I couldn't understand why everybody else didn't sign up. <laughs> but I'll fast forward to one of my first jobs out of college as a developer. It didn't matter to me starting off um, in Boston um, as the only woman, for that matter, in the corporate halls of Boston, sorry, where I was Few, there weren't too many black people, and I was definitely the only African in a company of about 2,000 people. What I felt was most important for me and my experience was being in a learning environment. But those early days also represent a moment in my journey where I began to experience a systematic undermining of my confidence as a developer and caused me to second guess and doubt. One of my managers, as I rose through the ranks as a software developer, was a revered post-NASA engineer. Everybody wanted to work with him. His name was Jim. Jim, for all his training and exposure, could not reconcile that a woman from Africa could be a successful developer. He would question everything I submitted. This was before the GitHub days. <laughs> but he would question everything I submitted, from semantics to questioning space in between my lines and the number of lines of my code and always ignoring whether or not the actual code had the intended outcome. I would work tirelessly, work long nights, go in on the weekends, just trying to make sure that my code was okay. Checking with others to see, do you see anything? And they'd tell me no, so I'd submit it and Jim would find something. So one of my co-team um, members, um, a guy, um, suggested we switch our code so I would write my code, and he would submit it as, um, as his, and then he would write his code, and I would submit it as mine, which I was a little bit nervous about because he wasn't a very good developer. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, we did this. And as usual, Jim gave high commendations to what um, the developer had submitted, 
fact, special commendations to what he had submitted, perhaps surprised at the quality of what he had submitted, and berated me again for what I had submitted. We told him what we had done, which at first he disbelieved, but it was a good confrontation to all his isms. Um, That experience I share because I think it's important. I see it even with, with women in ThoughtWorks and we run a lot of programs, Black Girls Code, um, Ruby Girls, Geek Nights. Um, and I'm saying it especially to you because many of you look like you're young enough to be start, starting your journeys. Is be cognizant of it, really be aware of it. Um, how you deal with it, we'll talk about as we talk about how we let women build. Anyhow, going back to my story. I'm old, we have established already, <laughs> and this was at the height of the dot-com boom. And we were forced to become polyscale, and this really stretched and made me get to a place where I was comfortable being uncomfortable. Really having to go in front of a client, knowing that all I really knew in my exposure was as a developer, and having to speak as a business analyst, and having to speak about timelines. And that I really treasure, and I think it also began to really shape um, my journey. But even though my capabilities continued to be validated and in spite of the experience with Jim, the little voice of doubt had set in. It took meeting other women developers through a national organization in the US for black engineers to realize I was not alone. Many of those early connections helped shape my confidence as a woman technologist and as a woman leader. But more so, my appreciation for being a part of networks, for learning, support, and lobbying the change we want to be. So I understand the value and importance of organizations like Akira Chicks that create the forum for us to compare our challenges, learn from each other, expand our network of influence, and create a forum of responsibility as well to paving the way as women leaders for the next generation of women and the generation beyond that. So kudos Akira Chicks. So going back to the topic of how we build, I do realize build in this forum perhaps meant how we build software. But I really wanted to focus on building in terms of how we build ourselves and then how we build each other, how we build each other. Our individual journeys are part of how we build from seed to seedling, seedling to shrub, shrub to tree. The journey may not be straight and narrow. You may have started out as a mango seedling, as Tiffany did, and ended up a eucalyptus tree once we discovered Ruby Rails. But it is a sum of those experiences that help you refine your intuition, build your practices, get you closer to your purpose and passion, and also force your disciplines. What I've learned in my journey of trying to build out some time, time to build myself, and sometimes I also need to be reminded. If success, if success were easy, we would all be millionaires, right? We need to put in the hard work, sometimes at great sacrifice and use the lessons learned to help shape our, your success. Coming up with an idea, because in Kenya there's a push for all of us to be entrepreneurs, but coming up with an idea is easy, I think so. It's building that enterprise that takes energy, self-belief and determination, borderline obsession. <laughs> Surround yourself with authentic people, but that also means that you yourself must be authentic and have the humility to, and grace to learn from what they and the universe are telling you. The more responsibility you have as a leader, the lonelier it gets, and the more courageous you must be to get in the front lines. I encourage people, a lot of the entrepreneurs that I do talk to, to get in front of that irate customer, even if you might not have been directly responsible. It really does build character. <coughs> it's not sustainable to do it all. So learn to delegate the things you're most comfortable and actively seek the uncomfortable. And again, I speak to that discomfort. It really will push you. It's okay to fail. Stand up as best you can, dust yourself off, take note of what tripped you, and hobble forward if you must. After all, it's not what you have gotten, but what you have become. I also learned this cannot be a solo journey. Something that's worked for me in my journey, and I highly encourage you all, is to create a board of directors for yourself. 
This is a group of people who know you well and in different contexts. They push you when you procrastinate, they build you when you doubt, they encourage you when you, when you fail, and celebrate you when you succeed. It's important because we, we all need a sounding board, something that will force yourself to get out of your head and away from that little voice of doubt and fear. But the greatest lesson to truly building into that tree that bears fruit, so not just the tree that's just a tree, but the tre a tree that will actually generate it's not enough to build just for yourself. You'll soon learn that it can't just be about the money. True success is in solving community challenges together. Women represent 50% of the population in Kenya, yet are sorely misrepresented in technology, education, and in the industry. Who is thinking about this? Who is ensuring that we're changing the narrative so that we're not only represented, but also developing solutions that apply for us, the very backbone of our economy. <clears throat> Add a bit of spin to a quote by Desmond Tutu. If you're neutral or complacent in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has a foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you're neutral or unaffected, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. We have a chance to make use of technology to make a difference for social movements and the economic future of our country and our continent. At ThoughtWorks, we are always looking for people, especially women, who are excited and committed to building a new sense of Africa in the spirit of our foremothers, but we know we cannot do it alone. We have a chance to build a new identity, Pan-Africanism for the 21st century. This is what motivates us in Africa for ThoughtWorks. And we know that this extends beyond just technologists. It requires the creatives, it requires the, human, the, um, the artists, the humanists and radicals to come together to transform our lives and our futures. Another lesson I have learned from my mother is it's never too late, as I said, to getting or staying involved. While her peers were contemplating retirement, she completed her PhD and is an active member of the Climate Innovation Center at Strathmore. Visitor. <laughs> it's not unusual for me to get a call from her, as I did several months ago, in the dredges of slaughterhouses in Dagoretti, trying to find ways to trap energy one way um, so it can be used in the community. She's as committed as anyone I know to championing the adoption of clean stoves to save lives, reduce the impact on the environment, and create livelihoods for women. When I told her I was speaking today, and she asked about Akira Chicks. Her response was, Mbui, I'm also in technology. You deal with IT, I deal with hardware. <laughs> to which I responded, indeed. And so I look forward to an Akira Chicks training program or a conference focused on technologies for renewable energy. Challenge? <laughs> so I commend the founders and the team at Akira Chicks for creating this forum and the space to allow us and the generation after us to unlock our intelligence, passion, and the great potential we hold within so we can build together. So as you create, innovate, and find new partners to collaborate with, to collaborate with today, please do not lose sight of the opportunity to continue to make it possible for other women to join us and build along with us. <laughs>